Our project was essentially responding to uh, the problem of uh, young children in cars in our area not being um, well protected, uh, strapped up on in, and in proper car seats and there had been a fatality in our local area uh, for a young child last summer. And so what we did, we came to Nenamers for funding to help us bring together a group of local organisations, including the church, but health visitors, children's centre, a community organisation, to together uh, get a bank of volunteers trained, properly equipped, to provide advice to parents at various events, showing them how to strap up children properly in cars and how to get the appropriate seats and the measurements that were necessary. So we paid for, for a professional to come to train us and we did events at supermarkets and at schools at nurseries providing advice. Tips for the application process, I, I'd say first of all it's a pretty easy process. It's, for us it felt like um, uh, a very positive one, you didn't need to be any kind of expert in doing funding applications. Um, but the, the key thing I, I'd suggest is that you've got good partnerships to start with. So our whole ethos was about working with groups that we've never worked with before and they hadn't worked with us and establishing a kind of key commitment together so that you know the, the direction of the project could, could be positive. Well, for us, ensuring that there were different faiths involved really was in the, the sheer fact of, of the partner organisation. So, health visitors were a mixed group, different faiths um, because of, of the area that we're in. Um, a community organisation that was pre predominantly one faith, ourselves as the church and the children's centre with a whole mix of folks. So, you know, j just working across particular organisations meant that we were by default. Um, cutting across different faiths and I, I guess the church was the unusual partner in that being Christian, so it's only one faith. What was effective um, was the, the building up of friendships and trust um, over, over time. Um, you know, it was a new thing and unprecedented to bring these organisations together um, and actually as we began to plan and regular meetings to work out what we're doing and how we'd go about it. Um, some of the mistrust and the, the sense that actually working cross organisation was just too difficult was, you know, quickly went away. I think the challenges were in then, you know, that um, actually working together as different organisations because um, each organisation had, had its own policy with volunteers, um, its own criteria for, you know, if you had a meeting in one place, uh, an event in one venue and the criteria you'd have for health and safety and all of that, we needed to iron out, well, who was responsible at various times because, you know, we didn't set up a new organisation um, and so just talking through, which, you know, required that level of trust that you know, we, we had to agree a single basis for, for doing things or agree to delegate that to a respective organisation depending on where we were at any single time. It's difficult to know what, what we do differently but I, I think, and this, this has been an ongoing challenge, we wanted it to be something sustainable so we had this bank of volunteers that would be available over the the next while beyond the, the term of the New Neighbours project. Um, and that, that hasn't worked as well, you know, the bank of volunteers declined as the momentum's uh, gone down. And I think I would have probably encouraged more attention right at the beginning about this issue of sustainability, about ensuring that you know, people are on board beyond 